And we have good news because our technicians have solved the problem with the audio in the videos. Yes, in the videos. So for the second part, we will have, I hope, fingers crossed, no problems with the audio in the, in the videos, okay? So um, as you know, we have uh, four or five pending groups, okay? So let's finish with them. And then we'll start the second part of the, of the session, okay? So who wants to restart? Okay, please. Gracias. Okay. So the standards we have chosen are global collaborator and digital citizen. And the activity consists on creating a class blog about different cultures in relation with different topics we work on along the year. For example, jobs, transport, food, clothing, different aspects, cultural aspects. Uh, the activity has been designed for the six-year students, and the subject is social science, and the block of contents is number three, living in society. Uh, regarding to the objectives, uh, they are to learn how to search information, to use the ICTs in a responsible way, to learn how to use the different computer programs, to learn about different cultures, and to value and respect different cultures. Yes. And to assess these tasks, as the students have to do it in pairs, they will have to introduce or to investigate a topic and to give us to download into, into the blog. So e each week or each unit, we are going to, everybody together, to co-evaluate our, our partners with a rubric or with a worksheet or with a checklist. And that's all. No? That's <laughs> okay, next group, please. Our activity is called Do It Yourself. It is going to be developed in arts and craft. It is to the sixth level, and it's going to be developed in four lessons. The objectives are to enhance students to use new technologies in order to create an art tutorial, and to promote the sharing of knowledge between dip, uh, students of different levels. Uh, the standards uh, are knowledge constructor, innovative designer, creative communicator, global collaborator, empowered learner, and digital citizen. And the contents are vocabulary and structures related to instructions, knowledge about art materials and techniques, and steps for making crafts. Uh, and about the procedure, uh, first of all, we as teachers uh, give information and show examples about different tutor tutorials to the sixth grade uh, students, and then we give instructions to prepare a tutorial and ask them to decide in groups what kind of craft they, they, will, they would like to, to explain and show in, in a video. For example, a, a tutorial about a bookmark or a key ring. And finally, with all the necessary materials, they record the tutorial step by step. And we as teachers can show the, this tutorial to the other groups, to lower groups. And we think it's a good way to take advantage of this work and to motivate the, the students. And that's all. Thank you. 
Hello, our activity is named it. We're going to visit to the zoo. The areas we are working are natural science, arts and craft, and English. The level for that we, which is designed this activity is for five grades of primary education. The standard that we have in account are empower learner, knowledge constructor, computational thinker, and global collaborator. I go on myself. Um, the, um, uh, yeah, the next one would be the objectives. Uh, we are trying to find out information from a web page, in this case from, this, from a zoo web page, to organize a day trip to a zoo, to budget a trip, and to create, uh, in a groups, to create flyers or displays covering the visit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to start with the activities. The first thing we're going to set is a web quest. When uh, designing a web quest, uh, our suggestion is that you should go for uh, government, government sustained uh, web pages. Uh, our personal favorites in, in the group were the London Zoo or the Smithsonian, the London Zoo or the Smithsonian in the case of the Americans. Uh, things that are uh, going to be, the things that are reliable enough so that you think that you're going to prepare an activity and the web page is going to be standing for a long time so that you can reuse it. Uh, in the case of the web case we're going to design, we, uh, we're thinking of uh, dealing with timetables, route to the museum, to the zoo, access to it, ticket prices, cafeteria price list, and then relating to animals, we are thinking of questions related to animal taxonomies, origin of animals, life expectancies, and trivia of the animals. And then the activity. Yes, uh, well, the activities, <coughs> they are based uh, basically in um, using the web quest in order to, to find out best timetables, best routes, ticket prices, price lists on the cafeteria. And this is based on the, on the trip and uh, later uh, based on, the, on what they are going to, to find in the zoo is uh, animal taxonomies, uh, life expectancy of uh, the animals, regions, and a trivial on curiosities about the animals. And finally, the assessment. <coughs> we will base our assessment on some instruments such as uh, direct observation, rubrics in order to check the use of English, how, to, how they cooperate, and how they make agreements and solve uh, possible uh, conflicts and problems they find. And of course, in the final, in the final product, those uh, displays uh, we have mentioned, or uh, leaflets or flyers. Okay, that's all. Thank you. All right, so our group uh, has designed like a project uh, related with clothes designing. So the title for, for it is going to be Fashion Designer. Uh, we are going to work uh, different standards like innovative designer, digital citizen, and creative uh, communicator. It is going to be based uh, for the fourth grade students and we are going to develop it uh, for four sessions. And we are going to work it uh, during the arts and crafts, English, and also natural and science, uh, social science as well. Okay. The objective can be the following. To understand and produce vocabulary of clothes, use, English, uh, uh, use the English language in a real context, learn about different materials, design clothes and draw them, Use the new technology uh, to record a catwalk and make a video to download in our school blog and work in group in a collaborative way. Okay, related to the procedure, first of all, we, we are going to use Realia for presenting the new vocabulary. Uh, in order to do this, we will introduce... <laughs> 
all the materials, uh, some materials and clothes uh, inside a box. Um, clothes like pyjamas, jacket, dress, uh, skirt, etc. And materials like cotton, metal, straw, wool. Uh, after that, we will do a picture di dictation in groups. For instance, she's wearing a pink skirt, and they draw uh, the picture. As students, we will design different and funny combination of clothes using uh, creative materials like uh, plastic or uh, paper colors. Or, Finally, they will draw all the designs, and they will present them in the assessment. Okay, as uh, she says, uh, students will do a presentation describing them, themselves, uh, what are they wearing, and they will do a catwalk around the classroom. Um, they will do it in groups. One, of the, uh, one member of the group will be the speaker, and he will uh, describe what are they wearing as well. Then they change the roles. Uh, as well, we will use a diet of observation, of course, and we are going to record them uh, doing this activity. Um, we will attach uh, using the app. Um, what's it? Yes, here, panel. <laughs> okay, that was. That is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other group? No? I think that you all have presented. No? Okay, great. Well, as as you have seen, with seven standards that are so global, you have designed activities from the zoo to the fashion catwalk, going to the uh, tutorials, for example, that I think that the, the idea of preparing a tutorial is quite good because they are conscious of, the learn, of their own learning process and also of the learning process of others. So, you know, seven standards that at first we may think that are so difficult to achieve, but in real life, as you have seen, it's something that we usually do and we are not conscious about that. So consider that because I think it's quite interesting to focus on these competencies that in fact are needed in our daily life, okay? So let's move now to the second part of the session. I think that I'm going to use this mic because it's better, isn't it? At the back, is this better than the previous? Okay, so I will, I will use this, okay? Um, I'm going to open the second presentation. And as I said, and this is quite important, uh, both presentations will be or are uploaded in Moodle. So if uh, then you want to check it, especially for the names of uh, apps, okay? Because sometimes we take notes and then we forget <laughs> what the, the app was for. So maybe. This way, you will have it more, a little bit more organized, okay? So, let's work. Okay, so we continue with the second part. In this case, the, the session is organized as follows, okay? First, the concept of new technologies. What do we mean with that? Then, the common digital framework uh, for teachers that I don't know if you uh, know about that because it was published in February this year and this sets the levels of digital competence that teachers should have, okay? And it follows the same, uh, the same structure of the common uh, European framework for languages from A1 to C2. So they describe the different uh, items and I think it's very interesting that you know it because it's quite possible that they become a kind of requirement in not a very, very far future, okay? So this will be probably in most of the cases the first time you see them, but it's important that you know them, that you identify them, and that little by little you follow the different items, okay? Then, I will move a little bit to uh, teachers training in this case mainly, resources that you can use for this idea of lifelong learning that we said at the beginning, especially in the case of MOOCs. 
And uh, finally, some resources for clear lessons that uh, I will focus mainly on different apps, mainly free apps that you can use with your smartphones, tablets, or laptops, okay? So, first, new technologies. What do we call new technologies? Here, I introduce uh, three uh, abbreviations. The first one is the one that we are very uh, used to that, ICT, that we commonly used. But then, I would like to introduce LKT and TAP, okay? Why? Because firstly, the, the first thing that we need to consider is that if these new technologies are really new, if they combine innovation and creativity, because in some cases, you know that when we call, uh, yes, I use technology in class, it's mainly PowerPoint. Is it true? In many cases, we use it quite commonly, okay? So this is not completely new, <laughs> okay? Uh, when I say uh, PowerPoint, I am also saying Keynote, and even in some cases, Prezi. Because Prezi, in fact, is a dashboard that we uh, write lots of information on it. Okay? So, and related to this, and related to innovation, this is a, a tweet by Maestra de Pueblo. Okay, that's, if you go to a teacher training course and you don't use posits and uh, big dashboards <laughs> do not certify, okay? So I'm not going to use posits, okay? So sorry about that, but you will have your hours certified. Okay, this was just a joke. Well, but related to this, related to innovation and creativity, is this really uh, new technologies? Is this PowerPoint, or uh, language labs, or even digital uh, blackboards that in some cases, some people, I'm not saying that everybody, of course, but some people use as a normal, uh, traditional blackboard, okay? I always say that in my case, in a personal case, as I told you, I usually have uh, lessons with more people than you are here. I usually have 70, 80 students. So at the back, they cannot see properly if I use a normal blackboard, for example, for teaching English grammar. So I had to use, when I want to write an example, I've, get, uh, I've got used to use a Word, or in my case, Open Office, because we use Linux, to write what I would write on the blackboard. But of course, this is not using new technologies. This is trying to solve a problem in the context of my lesson. Because as I said, at the back, they cannot see. And they also like this idea of using, a, as I said, a word processor for that, because then uh, they say, well, please, would you mind to save it and upload it to Moodle? <laughs> because it's more complete than my own notes. And I say, well, I don't mind. You know, for me, it's the same, deleting it or saving it. If it's good for them, I don't mind. But this is not actually using new technologies. Well, it's using technologies, but not the idea of new, okay? But the uh, trends uh, go in this way. In the use of augmented reality, for example, it's very commonly used uh, QR uh, codes to implement uh, you know, additional information. And if I'm not wrong, I think that you will use them tomorrow. Okay, for one of the activities that you have. Then also multi-touch screens that are more and more common in the case, for example, of iPads or tablets. Okay. Uh, flexible displays, okay, because as you know, um, there are more and more wearables that maybe we are not so conscious about, but technology in the clothes is getting more and more common. And as now we have, most of us, smartphones, Probably in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, we will have something related to flexible displays, for example, in, in wearables. Not only the smart watches, but also, why not, on the clothes, okay? Also, uh, 3D printing is more and more common, especially because they use it as a reward, as a prize for children. They have to design the model because it's not 
having a normal picture and transform it into a, a model, but they have to design how to produce the, the final result, the final, um, let's say, a sculpture, okay? the, the final result of the, of the project. We mentioned earlier robotics. This is now mainly as an extracurricular activity, but I know that uh, at least in, in my city, in Córdoba, in secondary education, they are introducing compulsory one hour per week in some schools, independently from the specialization of the students. For example, in bachillerato, you know that they have to choose if they uh, want to follow humanities or, or engineering, but independently from the um, specialization, they have to attend at least one hour compulsory. Why? Because we, don't, we shouldn't think about robotics only with the idea of creating a robot, but also related to cooperative learning, problem solving, and other um, interdisciplinary skills that are needed in our daily life, apart from, of course, this attractive of robots. Okay, cloud computing that we commonly use, for example, with Dropbox, with Google Drive, you know. Eye tracking, especially to, to measure the, the reading. Yes, to improve, for example, the speed of reading of uh, students, both in the main language and in the foreign language. Okay, this is not widely spread, but it's true that it's used. Because with this, there's, um, there are some uh, research on how to improve these processes, okay? And of course, gaming, okay? The use of games and play um, at the school. Any doubt? Okay, okay, no, because, I mean, if you have any question, please just raise your hand and I'll be more than happy to, to comment wherever you want, okay? So these are some uh, ideas, eight ideas, but this is now is new or more or less new. Probably next year or in two years time, it will be like all technologies, okay? Because this is changing continuously, okay? So, um, cloud computing is for example Dropbox. El almacenamiento en la nube, por ejemplo. El almacenamiento en la nube. ¿Vale? Cuando compartes en, o en Google Drive que tienes el Word que lo puedes usar en, en varios dispositivos incluso simultáneos. Eye tracking es el seguimiento de la vista. ¿Vale? Don't worry. I mean, I can speak Spanish. If you, <laughs> if you get lost, I don't mind. Of course, the session in, is in English, but if you have any question, I have no problems, okay? Great. So, uh, ICT. I kept the abbreviations in Spanish because they are quite visual, tic tac tap. Okay, as I said earlier, they have a translation also into English. Okay, because in the case of uh, ICT, of course, you know that uh, it's information and communication technology, okay? And in the case of Selwyn in, in 2011, they say, schooling in the digital age is a complex, compromised, and often contradictory affair. But this is not to say technology cannot ask as a focus for improvement. So technology should be our friend, not our enemy, okay? It's not always easy because it is not always loyal, <laughs> but you know, we need to consider it as a focus for improvement, our lessons. And some of the benefits, as you know, are the universal access to education, okay? Equity, quality of learning and teaching, and also teachers' professional development, and we will uh, say something about that later, okay? But what about the other two abbreviations? In the case of TAC, or in English, LKT, is learning and knowledge technologies. Okay, tecnologías del aprendizaje y el conocimiento in Spanish. Okay, that is in fact what we do when we use technology in our lessons. Okay, it's not communication as a whole, but using technology for learning purposes, okay, or teaching purposes. And then this new approach of TEP that keeps the abbreviation in, in English 
is technologies for empowerment and participation. Do you remember the empowered learner? So that is the idea, okay? And related to empowerment, we can mention these key words, okay? Like for example, management, planning, solution, goal, skill. All this helps when we speak about an empowered learner, okay? And uh, did you know this difference between tic tac and tap? Does it ring a bell? Okay, in some cases. Uh, I have brought uh, a small video, I'm sorry this is in Spanish, but it's very short, about the differences and how these terms have evolved. And we managed to solve the, well, we hope, uh, the problems with the audio, okay? So I will try, but I have to disconnect the microphone. So if you don't mind, let's watch it, and then at the end, we comment some aspects. I think it's quite visual, quite clear, and you can see clearly the distinction between one and the others. Of course, in our daily life, I think that we are more in the second step, but why not? We can move towards the, th the third of them. If we empower our learners, for example, with this idea of uh, uh, social engagement, like for example, this idea of uh, a campaign against uh, uh, tobacco consumption, it's very easy. And in, in some cases, uh, I remember uh, that some weeks ago, and related to the topic of the zoos, uh, I, I heard that uh, a school had started a project to go to a zoo, but then the students realized that th these uh, animals were in captivity. So they started a movement to try to um, raise the awareness about the importance of wildlife in real contexts. You know, in Africa, in Asia, depending on, the, on their place of origin. And they started with some uh, leaflets and flyers and so, but in this direction. And this also happened, uh, something similar, also at the primary school, with, um, uh, against the abandonment of pets, especially in summer. Because we always like when, when we have a, a kitten, for example, or a puppy, and, and they are very small. And, but, but then summer comes, and we have some problems, because what can we do? So in these cases, there's a, a social concerns that are very near to students, and they can also uh, develop this idea of citizen um, digital citizen with this type of idea of empowerment of, of, of the learners. So I think it's not so difficult to introduce this social aspect because they will be, well, some people say that they will be the citizens of the future, but this is not true. They are the citizens of the present. So let's try with some social causes that are very easy to, to you know, to, to see the, um, 
the awareness of children, this is very easy, okay? So, you know, there are some ideas that we can put into practice that are not so far from our life. Of course, if we say, no, I want to uh, reduce hunger in the world. Maybe this is not as easy to reach as, for example, to avoid this idea of the pets in summer, okay? That they adopt responsibly, okay? 